This is um, a solar system, so upstairs in the in the upstairs floor we've got a false roof with a panel on. Yeah. Um, that panel simulating capturing sunlight. Um, the, it's used the sun's energy to heat up the hot water and this is linked to a, a combi boiler, which is common within the UK. Um, and what actually happens is if the, if the water temperature in the cylinder from the sun's power reaches the required 60 degrees C, it will bypass the boiler and go straight to the tap. If for some reason you've not got you've got cloud on a day yeah. or a summer's day and it doesn't get the water tank up to 40, 60 degrees, it will go in the boiler and the boiler will top the water up um, to the required temperature and then it will go off to the tap. So what this actually does is it's using the sun's energy to save That's you gas good, yeah. and makes your boiler more yeah, efficient yeah. because your boiler's not having to work as hard to tear the water up. So. I, left the I left the hot tap running this morning, <laughs> got home from uh, <laughs> burning the dark, but got home. It's called cold water now. Right. <laughs> I put yeah. the immersion on. <laughs> well, you know, if it was in summertime and you'd done yeah. that, you'd be having a nice hot, hot water tank That's by good. the time you got back. Yeah. And then moving down, we've got um, heat pump technologies. Yeah. So what we've got here is we've got a Mitsubishi heat pump. Um, this takes um, temperature from um, outside air temperature um, right. via a refrigeration and, and compression cycle, heats that air up and compresses that air, and that, can, that energy can be used then to heat up hot water or space yeah. heating. So initially, the initial demand would be for your hot water. Once you've got a full tank of hot water, you'd then actually be able to use that energy, um, which is just extracting that low temperature. That looks a bit complicated to me. It looks more complicated than it is. Um, and obviously, it's up to us to make sure when the students right. come through here, they understand exactly what everything does. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. But it's, it, in essence, it's a hot water cyst, uh, cylinder with your central heating already added to it. Yeah. With your control panel, so when you break it down, it's not as complicated as people first think, but it does look complicated at first glance. Yeah. So these, these, this technology is very, very efficient for every sort of one kilowatt of so, energy so you put in. Explain to me again, what does this actually, this fan? So this will, this will, this will draw air in, draw air in. and it will go through a, heat, a, a plate exchanger, yeah. and it will go through a refrigeration and compression cycle, right. and it takes the temperature in the air, and it makes it a lot hotter, so it can use the energy out of the air to heat other uh, applications up, like water right. or space heating. Okay. So, um, so it's, it's a little bit like your, you know your fridge at home. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And your fridge uses it in, in reverse, basically. It takes your air temperature right. out of your room yeah. and, okay. and makes it cold for the fridge. Yeah. This does it in reverse. So it very, it's the same sort of technology you have in fridge. Um, through a refrigerant cycle, um, uses that for in hot water and, and space heating. Okay, and in, in obviously in, in um, with the with the other two units, the air to air units, yeah. these can be used not only to generate heat. So in the winter times, these these work in exactly the same way as that unit, but instead of using it to heat hot water, it's used on a traditional air blower, just like you do you have in your air conditioning. Air conditioning so in yeah. summer you can have your air conditioning on, and in winter you can have this using it in reverse to actually heat the room. And for every one kilowatt of energy it's costing you to run these, you're getting about four or five back out of it. So, very, very efficient. That's amazing. So, th these are very popular in new builds for the co for sustainable homes um, to make sure that we're meeting the requirements for our CO2 footprint. So, made you know, by Mitsubishi. We yeah, got, we've got, got our gentleman from Mitsubishi here oh, today as well. There's, 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 there are other manufacturers in the UK that are making heat pumps as well, you know, yeah. so, um, but the, renew, the renewables marketplace is getting, is getting a lot of interest from suppliers now because obviously they see it as a growth area. This is um, a ground source heat pump, so again it's very similar, similar technology to what you've just seen, but instead of actually using the air temperature as a source of energy, it's actually using the ground temperature as a source of energy. So this would be buried a metre down, right. and it would extract out the soil, very very low temperature through a heat transfer fluid, um, and again through a refrigeration cycle and compression cycle inside the pump, it would use that energy, heat it up and use it for underfloor heating. So you'd be able to actually get low temperature under floor heating to give you a nice ambient room temperature within your property just for extracting heat from the ground. Is this still um, considered to be something that, that could be used in a domestic property? Yeah, from a ab commercial? absolutely. The only problem with ground source is um, 
the space requirements because you, you often need quite a lot, lot of pipe to go down to give you the, the requirement on energy for the property. Um, so it does cost considerably more to install than air source does because you've got a lot more works involved to actually install the pipe work. If you're very tight on space, you can actually bore hole and drill down like they would do for water wells and feed the pipes down vertically. So it's all about extracting low energy temperature from the ground, using that for a refrigeration cycle. In terms of new build, New build, again, you know, when they're doing the foundations, it's easy it's, enough to yeah, do. Yeah, but, but uh, retrofitting. Properties, it's, it's yeah. The ones that I've installed, people have been lucky enough to have quite a bit of land. So you can yeah. actually put it into the land, and, and obviously, um, if it's a paddock, etc., yeah. it doesn't disturb the, the ground. It's quite expensive, these. So yeah. Um, they're not cheap. Um, but obviously, the longer term benefits are you're getting a lot, you're getting a source of energy from yeah. very, very little outlay on your running costs, but you do have capital outlay, which needs yeah. to be paid back over a certain period of time. Yeah. Um, but that's the same with all renewable technologies. Obviously, um, they are slightly more expensive than boilers are, yeah. but they are guaranteed for a lot longer than yeah. boilers are, and you're obviously getting a lot more efficiency out of the, yeah. the renewable what technologies. What about maintenance? I mean, do you have to have people coming in to maintain them at all? The manufacturers will tell you that they're fairly maintenance-free. Um, they do require a certain amount of maintenance, but nowhere near as much as a boiler would do. So again, from, an, um, from your running cost point of view, you don't have to factor in annual service and annual maintenance contracts. Um, they just, basically, the glycol really wants to be changed every five years on these. Right. Uh, this, uh, this, does this produce hot water? Um, it can do. On this rig, we've got it set up to actually produce underfloor heating, um, but this can be linked to a hot water cylinder um, via a diverter valve, and you can actually have it hot, heating hot water first. Once you've got a full tank of hot water, you can then divert it off if you require to to do your underfloor heating. So, this this technology over the last sort of five to six years has, has progressed quite quickly. Whereas the temperature they used to be able to get up to, whereas um, now the temperatures that they can get up to is you know pretty comparable to a boiler. And some of the manufacturers are selling heat pumps as direct boiler replacements. This is heat recovery or ventilation. Um, obviously, this we work very very closely with our colleagues from Polypipe. Um, so I'll let you explain this. I might as well let oh, you explain right. this. Yeah, no problem. Well, this is a uh, mechanical ventilation heat recovery unit. Um, obviously, with houses getting a lot air tighter now, is a, a big thing. Wasted energy. So, uh, what this basic unit does, rather than extract your your air from your wet rooms directly outside to a vent, um, it comes through to this central plant, and inside here is um, a heat recovery. Um, system uh, where the air passes through and then the cold air drawn in from the outside um, yeah. collects the heat from the wasted energy so basically you're then evacuating cold air to outside right. and reusing the extra heat so that the fresh air you're bringing in is preheated um, they're about 92 percent efficiency um, efficient so does it, does it's a very great it, energy saving where does it does it store it within the, the, the no no it's, it's basically a, 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 a oh, circulation circulating ah, right, unit. Okay. so your extract right, air comes, comes through, through there, passes through there, the and out the other side goes out cold and then yeah. cold fresh air coming in is yeah. preheated <laughs> If you can imagine you, your house and, you, and, and first thing in the morning if your heating's not coming you have a shower, yeah. in your shower the, it gets quite warm because of the heat that the shower generates. Yes, yeah. These systems can actually extract that heat out of the shower room and put that into other rooms to save on your heating um, and reuse that energy that you've used in the shower, yeah, right. reuse it in a different room to actually generate heat or increase the room temperature slightly um, to make your existing heating more efficient. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it was before heat recovery it was just the extract fan would yeah. pull the air out. And the fresh air would just come in at ambient temperature through trickle vents and, mm. and, and so on. Is which this a British idea? Or? Yes. yes. Polly Piper, um, the history in, in your centre of excellence at Ellsford, you've got a, a big chart with all the history on, and it's um, really interesting to have a look at exactly where Polly Pipe came from because it was originally um, a very small company and now it's, it's an international brand and an international company. So. These are our, our sort of Rolls-Royce um, bits of kit for the centre. Um, these, all, all of these six rigs are all interchangeable, so this allows us to um, allow students to think about how renewable technologies can interact with each other to generate greater efficiencies within the household. So if you've got, for, say for example, a heat pump fitted to a property, it's actually what can you, what other green technology can you add on to that property to either preheat the heat pump 
to get, get a gen generate a better efficiency from your heat pump and therefore a less less running cost for, for greater output. So this allows us to swap things around and we can, these are all hand tight rigs that we can just undo, we can move the rigs around, configure it in, in, in a number of different um, configurations to right. show students how renewable technologies can interact with each other and, and link technologies to get greater efficiencies out of the systems. Um, so this is, fun, from a training point of view, this is, these bits of kit are absolutely fantastic. Um, it allows us to also, because they're all so mobile rigs, students come in this area they'll come into these right. rigs, all, all these little labels etc are all magnets so I can take all these off all right. and give the labels to the students and say right label everything up for me to check their understanding um, right. to make sure that whatever we've covered on the course has sunk in and they understand exactly what components are Where do the students which. come from? Are they, uh, all over the UK aren't they Gary? Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, um, Kent's a massive area, isn't it? So, like, a lot of the students are sort of Kent-based. Um, yeah. You know, because Kent is obviously covers quite a vast area, doesn't it?